everybody. Welcome back to the Basic Chat, another group chat episode. Hey. And today... <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm impulsive. If humans, if humans could go chibi form, that would have been your chibi form. <laughs> Oh my god, I'm impulsive today. I don't know what's wrong with you. <laughs> he said, hey. <laughs> Please. I'm also burning up, but it don't help that I had a sweater oh, on. Okay. Oh, Anyways. No facts. We both have our long sleeves. I don't know the fuck why, because it's not even hot outside. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> but today, we are just giving our first thoughts, our opinions on the first episode of 25 o'clock in Akasaka. Wait, at 25 o'clock in Akasaka. That's right. the time. Period. So, because for those who don't know, we did get the pleasure of going to the press conference. Mm-hmm. Got to hear the behind the scenes team. He got to see the actors, hear their thoughts, which was really interesting. Like, I really yeah. enjoyed it. That's the first time ever going to, like, a like press, press conference. conference. Like, <laughs> like usually I you see, official. Right. Usually you see <laughs> clips of it. And you're like, oh, yeah. okay, this press conference. And you're kind of watching it in, um, I guess, third person. But yeah. we actually got invited to like the live stream and there mm-hmm. was a section where you could ask questions. We didn't um, get to ask unfortunately. questions. Unfortunately. But uh, <laughs> missed the deadline. <laughs> still, it was very nice to be there and be present. And mm-hmm. the fact that this is opening doors for JBL Japanese yeah. media to cross over and become more available internationally is really nice. Because if you didn't yeah. know, this is a collaboration between Gaga Ulala and TV Tokyo. Period. TV Tokyo don't do that. <laughs> they don't, don't do that. Don't. So, <laughs> so this was like iconic. Right. Iconic. So. And listening to like the, um, I believe it was the CEOs in the. Uh, yeah, the President? CEO of TV Tokyo, and then one of them was just like a translator. He was mostly like a like a liaison. One of they listen. They were coming with stats. They were coming with. It just showed. I I personally appreciated everything he was saying because it was giving that like they were genuinely trying to build up this market and not for like you know messy situations. Like mm-hmm. he came with like. My, I was like, okay. He said, let me give you a word. <laughs> Let me and get a word. a word he did. He Period. said, you know what? I'm going to say this in English. He was like, we good. <laughs> I, I got like, y'all. I was like, okay. <laughs> and he was like, just so y'all know, mm-hmm. it started here. Yeah. With blah, blah, blah. He was like, this ain't no da 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 I was like, period, <laughs> okay? <laughs> but yeah. You know, I got to paraphrase. Like, paraphrase. That's almost everything my man said. But. Okay. <laughs> but we're going to get into it, guys. Make sure you yes. join the chat and let's so guys um i guess what i can do is like read off the synopsis a little bit just so y'all get an idea of what the story is about in case you didn't know but according to my dramalist.com Flash seven six five. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> when Shirasaki, an underdog stage actor, gets cast in a gay drama series, he is surprised to learn that he will be working with Hayama, his charming clubmate from university, who is now a popular actor. During production, Shirasaki realizes that he will need some inspiration and goes to find it somewhere in the local gay where the local gay people hang out. When he didn't expect. <laughs> to meet Hayama there, <laughs> which eventually led to a drunken kiss. He soon finds himself confused and conflicted about his feelings as he struggles to keep his emotions contained on screen. No, you want to know what's funny? Because if you watched episode one, mm-hmm. everything that they said in the summary literally happened. Literally happens in episode one. <laughs> First, Literally to the T. <laughs> first, I would like to point out the attention to detail that the series has. Oh. I'm one of those people that really like loves how camera dynamics and the series score comes into play 
when mm-hmm. dealing with these shows. And you can tell that this comes out of TV Tokyo because of the high production value. But <laughs> it also has a good stage to set for like a really good story, which I appreciate. Mm-hmm. Which I appreciate. Yeah. It, it started off like really well for an epic for the first episode. Like mm-hmm. everything, it's basically clear cut who is who, what what is the situation. Like you already know already there's tension. You already know like how not not in a sense how it's going to go, but how what the plot is about to be. Like mm-hmm. it's very clear in the beginning which i really appreciate right and one of the things that really stood out to me was how in that first sit down reading that they had after Mm -hmm. uh shirasaka um shirasaki shirasaki Shirasaki. is shirasaki yeah shirasaki Uh let me get his name right (laughs) he said put some respect Period. <laughs> On his name. But one thing that really stood out to me was how they introduced you to the three main characters and what their personality mm-hmm. types were. And for me, that was when they had their first sit down reading. If you noticed during their introductions, they showed you everything about them during their introductions. Hayama, oh, yeah. <laughs> when Hayama, when it was his turn to introduce himself, he was very much um well spoken respectful stoic. <laughs> stoic he had his yeah. he had his shit together very he experienced had a charm about him right right <laughs> then here comes uh Shirasaki and he's like <laughs> very jittery lots of words like timid shy timid and experienced he's like um very I don't know what to spacey. say right <laughs> right and then here comes Ryoji literally cuts off the CEO before he can finish his sentence and he's like this is who I am I was like whoa so he Look. <laughs> to me he comes off very <laughs> impulsive um as the episode went by I think he comes off as kind of overconfident and but mm-hmm. I think that overconfidence overcompet- is him overcompensating for something I feel for like there's something. more to his character yeah and yeah because I definitely clocked that when he cut him off I was like oh you're gonna be an issue you I was like I see it yeah. I don't know what it's going to be but you're gonna be an issue yeah. somewhere it might be and it could go one of two ways it might be he's mm-hmm. like an issue you know to the characters as far as like toxicity or like they yeah. have a falling out or he could just be the annoying character. I kind of wish they go the um, former because yeah. that would create a little bit of mess. A little I bit kind of want him to be a little messy on set and he be like the catalyst that like makes them like mm-hmm. come back together. I don't know something. I kind of want him to be a little messy on set because mm-hmm. it's already clear that he's close with Hayama because they worked together before. So I don't know. I don't know. I feel like with Hayama, I feel like it's one mm-hmm. of those situations where he tolerates him. It's like he oh, knows well, him. Yeah, true. He knows him. They've true. known each other for a while, but he's just like, oh, so this maybe is... it's like for Ryuji, for Ryuji, it's like we friends, like we work together, yeah. but for Hayama, it's like, sir, we're co-workers. <laughs> colleagues. Could you imagine? <laughs> We're like, colleagues. He's like, Calm down. pause. Okay. I don't know what she thought this was. But I feel like he's definitely going to have a huge mm-hmm. character arc as far as how he presents himself. Yeah. And this project is going to definitely change Ryoji. Yeah. Um <laughs> Hayama told Shirasaki, this is his yeah. way of like encouraging you. I was like, I don't know fully what Hayama's feelings are towards Ryoji. It's kind of, it, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. See, and that's, and that's why I feel like it's like they're friends because he knows that that's how Ryuji is. Mm-hmm. And Ryuji is the type to poke, 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 but it's like, He's not trying to be messy. Yeah. 
He might but just it not comes know where the line messy. is. Messy. Yeah, he it's kind of like how some people treat everybody the same. Like you don't mm-hmm. understand people's like boundaries or like mm-hmm. there's no emotional intelligence. You know what I mean? Right. So, Read the room. Yeah, so I feel like yeah. that's why Hayama was like, oh, he's just trying to encourage you. Like, that's that's just how he is. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm low-key hoping there's more to that, too. Yeah, because so Shirazaki was like, um, <laughs> it takes a lot of hard work to put together a series. Child, he was ready to... <laughs> and I also feel like it's going to be a coming-of-age story for Shirasaki. I feel yeah. like. I because, feel like it's very much finding yourself. Yeah, because like I, I honestly really like that scene with him and the director. Because I mm, thought she was yeah. going to chew him out. I thought Me she was going to be like, bruh, get it together. You, But the way she was like encouraging was like, you can do this. Like, it's cool. You just need like a little bit more of this, a little bit like whatever. I was like, okay. I was like, period. And this is why I have kind of attached myself to Shirasaki's character. While mm-hmm. he's very much um inexperienced in social life and he's kind of shy and closed off i do think he's a very much straightforward individual oh yeah he's very like he's not a bullshitter he no. he's it's not going to there's never going to be a point where you don't know how he feels about a certain mm-hmm. situation at least i don't think this is just off of first impressions but um he's very much like forward because when he was in that uh restaurant and had to sell that man he was like um this is not our problem you the one that put that syrup in in that drink you did that okay and then he went to the back and told his co-worker he was like why couldn't you just tell him that now i do feel like depending on who it is Mm -hmm. he'll be straightforward because he has a situation with hayama and it's like every time he's around I almost like cat got your tongue. Yeah. <laughs> but so, but I feel like that's more so like he's just trying to figure out like what the hell am I supposed to do but in I think this that's situation. Where the line is, though, because he yeah. gets very shy around him. But if you notice when they were in the club, um he was like taken aback a little bit because like I mean obviously hi yeah hi am I can't say his name. Hayama was in your <laughs> face looking all scrum dilly umptious and then you're like, yeah. but then he was like, um, I'm trying to find somebody to get it Child in with. That, I said, sir, no. <laughs> he said, he said, I'm a method actor. I'm a <laughs> I was like, bruh. I said, no, because when Hayama was like, practice, I look, I said, that is the better option. He your co-star anyway. <laughs> He said, he said, I don't know. Why not? This man said, let me just go find a rando. I mean. To throw it back on real quick. It might, it might be awkward if you do your method acting with your co-star too, though. Because it's like, what if yeah, it's, that's true, what if it's not like, good? And, at least I know you. Yeah, that's I don't true. know where this person been. Like, right. maybe that's just me. It's just dirty. I don't know you, sir. I don't know where you been. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, who are you? No, it's the same way. You? For me to like go there with a person, I at least have to have like some type of conversation. Some understanding it of who you are. It, it can't be like, hey, hey. Like, you know. No. But some of the little uh um what are they? What are they called? Like what? little Easter eggs. Easter eggs. Oh. So the little Easter eggs I enjoyed when he went to the club though was one. I was so I was trying to figure out where he was going at first because obviously I cannot read Japanese. But yeah, I didn't know where he was going. I saw the sign and I was like, is he at a muscle bar? Question mark. Maybe that's just an advertisement. But then mm. when he was walking in, if you know um, RuPaul's Drag Race, there is a. Um, poster with Willem, Courtney X, and uh, I can't remember who else is on the poster. Wait, was that poster in there? Yeah, it was, it was, it's quick. You gotta catch it quick because he's walking and he passes it and you just see Willem right there like, but she's um, I didn't notice it! She's like blurred (laughs) out in the background, so Mm -hmm. unless you know what Willem looks like, you wouldn't catch it like but she was right there. I was like, oh, okay, that's where he is. And Let then, me go back and see if I can find it. Because I look for Willow. 
<laughs> and then when he walked in the club, if y'all didn't know, I bartended for like two years when I was in Anaheim, right? And you can tell what type of person comes in by the drink that they ordered. When he ordered oolong tea, I was like, he's going to clock him. He's like, it's your first time, ain't it? You ain't never been to one of these he clubs ever. You're new here, huh? You're new here. Because who goes to a club and orders a tea? It is tea. It ain't. Mm -mm. He was so cute. That's how you know he been in a little bubble all his yeah, life. Yeah, you can just tell been in a routine. You can tell what type of kind of person it is by what type of drink they order, whether or not it's fruity, whether or not it's yeah. very like um dry or anything like that. Yeah. By how much alcohol content it has in it, and by how many they purchase right off the back, you could tell a yeah. lot about a person. <laughs> so when you ordered that Ulong tea, I was like, Lord, you just gave yourself away. And you came in with a cap. Nobody comes in with a cap unless they ain't never been there or unless he's they don't want to be look. seen. Hello, he said, don't notice me. He said, I'm not here. I, but the thing is, you came trying to pick somebody up. So how are you going to be mysterious? He, he's trying to be discreet. <laughs> He said, he said, he said, you want a little, you want a little. He said, what? <laughs> Ew. <laughs> Not a little. A little taste. Oh, fucking weak. But I do, I do, like, really enjoy it so far. Like, mm. and I agree it because it's only one episode, so, like, I really yeah. don't have much to go off of. But they are doing a really good job as far as, like, the chemistry mm -hmm. and how... Because it doesn't even right now because they're technically supposed to be awkward. It doesn't feel awkward, yeah. if that makes sense. Like, yeah. it's given that, like, everybody is putting their all into their characters. It's, like, it's awkward in the sense of their characters, but it's not awkward in the yeah. sense of how the real people playing the characters mm -hmm. are interacting. Exactly. And, and how, like, the storyline <laughs> is flowing or, like, mm -hmm. the script is flowing. It doesn't feel awkward like, yeah yeah but, and i'm really enjoying it going back to what you said about yeah shidasaki and the writer i mm -hmm. really enjoyed that conversation because when i tell you it's really easy for actors to be like oh my god i relate to this character so much like i yeah. see myself in his character, you know, <laughs> you know the the actor thing, the actor thing. Yeah. But the fact that Shirasaki was like, I don't relate to this character, not one bit. But I want to get to know this character, and I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure there is something that That's I can find real. in him. That's so yeah. real. That there's something I can find in him that I relate to, mm -hmm. and I was like, That's so real. I and I'm glad she chose him because. If I were someone who was running auditions and to pick someone, if I'm getting the cookie cutter answers, I'll be like, no, like I know if it's a production and you're just trying to find somebody mm -hmm. who fits the characters, like it's easier to go. Whatever. Yeah. It's easier to go for the person that relates because they're probably going to have a more genuine uh, relationship with that character. Yeah. But in my head, I'm like, if you don't have anything in common with that character and your answer to me is that I'm going to find a way to relate to this person, I feel like yeah. you'll attach to that character more than somebody who already knows. So they already have the confidence that they can play the character right. And exactly. then it's not going to come off well on the screen as somebody who exactly. worked hard to get to that place and understand those feelings. So I really appreciated that conversation between those two. And I appreciate that she gave uh, Shirasaki a chance with mm -hmm. that, but because it it just gives that like she can tell mm -hmm. that he genuinely wants to do this role and wants to put himself into this person's mm -hmm. like position and really understand. And I feel like that's why she talks him the way she does. And I feel like she's secretly like really rooting for him. Mm -hmm. Like no matter what, she knows that like if he really gives it his all he can pull that out of him and she's yeah. like excited to see what he's going to do yeah exactly with the role oh, <laughs> i love it this yeah. show i love it already i can i can confidently say that i'm going to love this I'm show i'm going to enjoy it <laughs> yeah just like i guess as um 
a last point because we kind of went through the whole series or not the series but the episode anyway this wasn't going to be a really long episode it was just you know we wanted to show some love to the show and to the collaboration of tv tokyo and gaga ooh la la but but (laughs) i think it's really nice when they have characters who don't have a huge past together but Mm -hmm. there is some type of passerby with their characters because when hayama and shirasaki were in the bending area Mm -hmm. and hayama was like how have you been i was like oh and then um (laughs) shirasaki was like you remember Hello, that shit literally made my heart flutter because I was like, boy, you thought he ain't know you. He he and he remembered you. Right. He said, same university, same film club, um, two years apart. And he's like, but oh, we never talked to each other. And he was like, we did one time. I remember it. You don't. I'm and like, that's the crazy part. Y'all literally had one conversation and he remembered. That means he been peeping you. Right. <laughs> been I, I kind of want to know the time frame between when they were in yeah. university and where they are now it's giving mm. a smooth four years but you know I feel that's like just I'm, a guesstimate well, i was about to say i wonder if but i really feel like eventually they're gonna give us that flashback oh yeah and Definitely. it'll be like oh four years ago or like whatever mm. it will be able to like because i want to know yeah like what it was like in university right. <laughs> From both perspectives, know. though, like I want to know, was he peeping you the whole time when you thought he wasn't looking? Like, like what was period. it? <laughs> um, I need all that tea. But uh, lastly, if you didn't know, this show is adapted. It's interesting because it's like the fourth fourth wall because it's a show <laughs> about actors in a series in a series, but mm-hmm. it's adapted from the manga uh, Hiru no Yama, or Yuma. Hiru no Yuma. So, if you can, if we have access to it, make sure you go read the original manga as well. But, do you have any uh, final closing thoughts? Um, no, just go show with love. Give it a chance. Like, the show's really interesting. Until I really feel like It'll be interesting for those who like a good storyline, for those who like something that gets to the point. Yeah. <laughs> for those, I really feel like it's going to cater to everybody's mm-hmm. taste, I feel like. So, yeah, definitely go give it, go show it some love. Yeah. For and sure. It's a nice 10 episodes. Each mm-hmm. episode is going to be anywhere between 25 to 30 minutes. Um, you can watch it on Gaga Ooh La La. The first episode yes. is free. So you can yes. you can get a little taste before you buy a little taste, a little but, sliver. A little sliver. <laughs> but one thing, good thing about Gaga Ooh La La is they are one of the, if not the cheapest streaming platform that we have yeah. for a BL Boys Love series. A good old, you know, I think it's like six, six nine, Yep, six ninety nine. Yeah. That's that's a happy meal. Yeah. That's a happy meal. Like period. You got one little, oh, a one little that's coffee. That's a coffee. That's a I don't know. That's a um like a what is it? Four ninety nine kitchen like top up pick. <laughs> It's a top of package. Like, you know. <laughs> so but yeah. get into it. But we'll leave the links in the description box. Mm-hmm. Uh make sure you follow both of us on our separate accounts, uh BL Coded, as well as Alyssa Danielle, her reaction okay. channel. Make sure you follow us on our Patreons as well and support the basic mm-hmm. chats. Also, mm-hmm. follow Gaga Ulala everywhere, subscribe, <laughs> watch their giant array of yes. queer dramas and LGBTQIA plus media. Because they got a plethora. They got a lot. It's, it's, a, big it's a big selection. It's a big selection. So, but yeah, that's it. So, exit Get the out. chat, guys. <laughs> Bye, love you, Peace out. Bye. <laughs> I thought there was a hot dog on your floor, but it's that little toy. <laughs> <laughs> It's like picking up after a toddler. She throws her toys everywhere. You're like, girl. I'm like, get it Being together. Being a bank having a mutilated bunny. <laughs> but. Okay. <laughs> that's gonna be a um, that's gonna be a blooper. <laughs> okay.